Darby Allen, here on the sessions. You're in your hotel room. You're in Cincinnati. I feel like it's weird that you're just like probably like five minutes from my house, but here we are over shitty Wi-Fi and just making the best of a situation. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting the weather to be so like cold. It's I freezing. Totally... Yeah, like I I got off the plane and, you know, in Georgia, it's still like, even in Seattle, when I went to go visit Seattle last week, it was still like 85 degrees. And then Georgia, it was like 80 degrees. And then now here, I'm like, damn, I forgot. I know. It wasn't like this literally yesterday. Today's freezing. I just got back into it. I was like, I'm running some errands. I'm like, what is this cold? What the hell? Anyways, welcome to Ohio. You made it. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> you have landed. The eagle has landed. Um, okay, so I'm going to start this interview off with something super random but i was watching the trailer for a new timothy chalamet movie and i realized he reminds me of you have you ever been told this i don't know who the hell that is no. <laughs> what i don't know stop it. honestly i don't have a tv at my house i only just recently got wi-fi because people told me i should have it for work um because i kind of live out in the woods um it's like I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know any new movies. I don't know any new shows. I don't have, like, I don't know shit. Wow. Um, well, but, first uh, of all, yeah. Timothy Chalamet is kind of like the it boy. He's like very kind of like brooding and like he's very serious. He's a great actor. He's in the movie um, Call Me By Your Name. I can't remember the name of the new movie he's doing. It was actually filmed here in Cincinnati. Something like, I don't know. Anyways, whatever. He's great. And anyways, he reminded me of you when I was watching the trailer for his new movie. Oh. I was like, I'm trying to place where it's drawn, when it's, what it is. I'm like, it reminds me of Darby. That's what it is. I'll show you at TV because we are now coworkers. Yeah, there we I go. Heard. I know. I saw, saw it when uh, I was down home in Atlanta and I, I wasn't there this past week in Toronto. I was getting ready for this Halloween party at my house. Oh. And, um, yeah, that's why I'm stoked that I'm here in Ohio because I didn't know if I was going to survive my uh, my latest. <laughs> but uh, Wait, shit, um, what does that entail? What what is your Halloween party? I feel like this thing must, it's at your house in the woods. Yeah, we had like uh, some bands play. We that car I jumped over my house with the Jeep. Uh -huh. We got that running again. And we were going to do more uh, jumps in the woods, some more. I don't know how the Jeep is still alive, but it is. And we were going <laughs> off some more. And uh, it was cool. I ordered a bouncy house. But I um, yeah. didn't get to use it. I was so busy all day that I ended – then I got my money's worth in the bouncy house by sleeping in it. Um, <laughs> but that, that was, but I also got a dunk. And then we filled oh up the whole gosh. dunk tank. Yeah, we filled it up with everything from the grocery store, like raw hamburger meat. And Ew! Uh, yeah, it was. It smelled like shit. <laughs> and, uh, it was. It was fun like though. Uh, we then we had a big skate contest because I just built this pretty good sized skate park in my backyard, and um, yeah, Billy Gunn was also there randomly, which is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> did Billy Gunn go in the dunk tank? No, he didn't go in the Ew. dunk tank. He did. I got a wrestling ring downstairs in my basement. Mm -hmm. We did this thing where we were running the ropes, and Billy Gunn was shooting us with a paintball gun. Oh, my God. And he caught me right on top of the dome right here. And, you know, it was just funny. To, it was a funny sight to see Billy Gunn hanging out with a bunch of skaters. <laughs> and, uh, Billy Gunn, that's, so. what, that's his fountain of youth, I think. I mean, I don't know how this guy is just like this resurgence of Billy Gunn. I am here for it. I, the scissor me daddy, we are all on board. Everyone loves Billy Gunn right now. Hell yeah, as it should be. The guy's a saint. Yeah. He rules. It was fun. Uh, what a, what an insane party. Are you exhausted? Like, is your body beat up? Does your body ever get a break? I feel like you're always just kicking your own ass. Yeah, no. Every time I'm off for the week, it's like, all right, Darby's going to, like, take the week off and chill out and whatever. But it's like, I go harder outside of work than I do in the realm of AEW, so I'm never really like stopping. So uh, it's it's fun though, because I never know when I'm gonna, you know, get hit by a bus or sure. Something. Yeah, fair enough. Live life to its fullest. How old are you? Yeah. You're young. You're young, so you're still feeling good. I'm 29 good? right now. Okay. Yeah, well. I feel great. I feel and feel amazing actually. And I've been jumping off of 
washers and dryers on the concrete since I was four. So Jesus. I feel uh, I feel pretty solid. I feel really solid, actually. I do. I'm so extreme about physical therapy. Oh, the you one are. Thing you see me- yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Because I, I want to be as crazy as for long as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you ever see me at tapings, I'm always in the doctor's room. Not not because I'm like messed up, just because I like to do maintenance and like dry needling and acupuncture and oh. you know a lot of yoga and shit. It's cool. Like yeah, man. I don't what do you feel think like works crap. the best? I was curious about that because I was like, I wonder if he is one of those guys that really like gets in there and takes care of himself. Because I would almost I would have thought maybe you weren't because you're so extreme and so insane. I thought you just like I don't know would maybe throw some ice on it. But good to know you're actually being like diligent about taking care of yourself. What do you think's most effective? I would say the j- acupuncture. Really? That shit. Okay. I talked Sting into trying it for the first time. And he said that he got like a kick ass night's of rest. So uh I think it I think it works like really good. Um I don't know, there's a lot of shit that I do. I got my whole house is full of like weird knickknacks, like aversion tables and all this like cool like whatever. There's like things that you put your neck in and you pump this thing up and it stretches your neck out and I don't know, man. It's like some like some BDSM crap, but uh it's not. It's uh it's a f- physical therapy. I feel like I need now that I work for AEW I feel like I would like to start a segment where I just come to your house and I just I just want to check out what you have going on there it seems like a a madhouse all the time yeah I want to I always thought it'd be cool if AEW did like a cribs yeah you know and then uh (laughs) like my house would be psycho but we (laughs) yeah I don't know there's we got 14 acres we just Jeez. We're doing all this. Yeah, we're, how we many people throw. live at your house? You say we. Like, how many people are involved in this project? Uh, two right now. Okay. It's just this friend from high school named Kentucky. He's like my right hand crazy man. He's okay. like insane. I don't even. That guy's in. And then Nolan, uh, who plays in a band called Ghost Main. Uh, okay. So he's never. I told him he goes. He's on tour all the time, and he like lives in. He lived in Los Angeles. I'm like, dude, you're never home. Like you're wasting all this money on rent. Like, yeah. just come live out in the woods. So it's just us. And Kentucky's the lawn care guy. He takes care of everything. Great. We all grip. need one of those. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do, all- do a little maintenance. <laughs> yeah. He's- so why no tv why no wi-fi why out in the woods this is obviously an active decision how come uh out in the woods is because like i want to blow shit up and not be bothered and i want to <laughs> jump my house and not be bothered and i want to you know i don't know there's a lot of things like just freedom and but no tv and wi-fi i feel like i could turn my mind off because i'm really into like kind of meditating a lot and being in my I don't know I, there's a lot that goes into it where I feel I don't know man the moment I'm around like TV or like Wi-Fi I kind of feel trapped mm-hmm. and it feels like there's like a rat race going on when I would rather just f- off and live in my own world and that's what I do all the time it's like uh, a few people come over and then when they see like the place like no wonder you don't feel the need to go on Twitter. <laughs> you're like, you're out here doing all these weird. You're living your life. This, yeah, all this weird that shit sounds... all day. So, okay. So are you like a big reader? Are you writing? Like when you're like in your own little world, what what all, I mean, aside from the stunts, we, we know the stunts are happening, but like when you're not destroying your body and jumping your house and re- repairing your Jeep, what are you doing? <laughs> I do do a lot of reading and I do a lot of writing. I went to film school, but I dropped out for wrestling. So I always like try to come up with these like screenplays of these movies and stuff like that. And I'm always thinking about it. And like I get, I want to pull the trigger on um, directing my first film like mm. pretty soon. But it's just a matter of like, you know, I was trying to like build my name up as much as possible in the last couple of years. So when I release this film, it's kind of like, got a head start as opposed yeah. to some random jack off from film school that's like sure. you know, there's a million people releasing movies but if i figured if someone's like yo darby allen has a movie people would be like let me see what that's Garner about. a little interest what are your like what are the movies that you gravitate towards of like movies that you want to make uh so movies i want to make are just like dark comedies but what i gravitate towards is like documentaries mm. uh, yeah 
that's like uh it's like something I would always really be interested in, like all these crazy documentaries and stuff like that. But uh as of right now, the screenplay that I've gotten is for like dark comedies and stuff. Ah, so. Okay. Do you have like a DVD collection? What are you watching if you don't have TV and you don't know who Timothy Chalamet is? How are you like keeping up on, <laughs> on what's going on? I don't know. I really don't. I don't like I seriously I have no idea how I I don't know. I just watch skate videos all day. It sounds weird, but like I don't I I don't know what's going on. Like I don't know. There's so much going on that like someone's like, "Yo, did you hear there I didn't know there was a new like Hocus Pocus movie until like yesterday i was like what good actually it's pretty charming yeah. <laughs> it's not bad i and i yeah i don't know i guess if something's like as in i don't know dude i don't i don't know how i keep up with anything well i guess it's still kind of like word of mouth because if something's big enough that you need to know about it you'll hear about it i imagine yeah in some capacity. yeah that's that's kind of it's kind of it i think the last movie i've seen in the theater was like joker and that was what oh. 2019 yeah, something like that. Maybe even before that. Oh, no, Joker yeah. would have maybe been 2019. Yeah. And that's huh. just because I like Todd Phillips, the director. His I like his work. His first mm. ever uh, documentary was uh, he followed around Gigi Allen, if you know who Gigi Allen is. I don't. Who's Gigi Allen? The dude I'm named after. <laughs> okay. What? Who is he? What's his deal? I don't know who that is. Oh. Uh, are and you, you am I to... disappointing you right now? Tell me about this no, guy. I don't know. Am I a loser well, for not knowing this? Are no, people, uh, people Todd, are rolling their eyes at me right now? Uh, Todd Phillips followed around Gigi Allen uh, in the last like year of his life. And Gigi Allen was like a, it's funny because like I'm straight edge, but Gigi Allen was like a, the exact opposite. He died of like a heroin overdose, but he was a, he was a psychopath on stage. He'd like be the guy who would like take a crap on stage and eat it Great. and throw it at people. Oh my God. Yeah. He's, he's a, he's a, yeah. But the thing is like, um, Todd Phillips, the, his first ever film was called hate it. It was following Gigi Allen around and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it was, um, so, but then he went on to make all these like, critically acclaimed like movies like the hangover road trip now the joker which is like oh, interesting the selling movie uh for rated r of all time like it's like it's cool it's cool to see so what kind of stuff would you want to do i mean i feel like the cinematic style matches that aew has done have all actually been really great um what what kind of different touch would you want to do on a cinematic match or you know when working on them what's that all like the cinematic match was like I don't know that was that was kind of hell on earth. It was, was it? <laughs> yeah, because how it's like I get thrown through a door and it's like cut, do that again. <laughs> get, cut, okay, cut. yeah, that aspect would definitely and suck. You you get your adrenaline so high, and then you have to stop for so long and then go right. so high. I really uh, you hate it. I don't know if you remember. There's this part in the cinematic match where. I was on the second story and I was throwing a bat down to Sting, like just yeah. a baseball yes. bat. Yeah. And right before we were going to do the scene, Tony Khan was like, cut, cut, cut. He's like, don't you know how physics work? It's going to break Sting's face. Like the bat, like falling from the second story. And then uh, Sting's like, no, like we, we're going to do this. It's too cool not to do. And then it's like, no, it's going to like break your face. <laughs> if you don't catch it, like <laughs> oh, the bat's going to break. So like that was like the first and only time I ever really stopped and thought about like because normally if you think too much about things like you'll like yeah. you know what I mean like it'll just yeah. it'll throw you off. Uh, so, but Sting was like whispering, he's like, "Dude, just throw the bat." And then I'm I'm up but there. You can't and break like, Sting's face. That's a lot to like. That's a lot to carry on your shoulders to be the man that broke Sting's face. That's fucked up. <laughs> but Sting was like, dude, just throw the bat, like do it anyways. <laughs> and then we did it and he caught it like one hand it like perfect. And uh, Hell yeah. it was, but like, I remember we were filming from like noon to like six in the morning and uh, it was insane, but it was super fun, but I would never want to do it Turned out great. Again. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, wanted, I just wanted to do it again because like, I don't know how you're going to top, you know, there was so much stuff I wanted to do in there that we yeah. couldn't. You know, like, I want to, like, run someone over with a car or, you know, but uh, there was a lot of stuff 
I don't know. That's why if I don't get to do my like fun stuff in wrestling, I just do it on the weekends at my house. I just so uh, yeah, like it was fun though. What is like left for you to do? Like when you're thinking about either you're doing something in the ring or it's something you're gonna do once you get home. What are or do you have like a list written down somewhere of like shit that you're trying to accomplish or big feats? <laughs> like what is that? It was funny. It's funny you asked that because. I uh, I asked Tony like probably like a month ago. I was like, "Yo, do you have any connections to outer space?" And <laughs> does he? I feel like he might. Does he? I think he does. Yeah. Like so, I was just like, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like people are gonna politic and yo, yo, let me be champion. I'm like, there's been a thousand champions, but no wrestler has been outer space. So uh, let's make that happen. Yes. Um, but. But it always it always changes because like you know I was in Nitro Circus and that was like a big thing of mine because mm -hmm. I backflipped like the little tricycle over the four, like this forty foot gap and and I'm I'm just thinking of like first time ever it's like ain't no wrestler gonna f backflip a tricycle again you know like I feel like uh, I'm in a league of my own with that type of stuff but Certainly. it feels good because it I don't know it helps me like stand out because like when I first started wrestling I was like man am I gonna even be able to hang in this shit mm -hmm. and like I just didn't know how like I could fit into this world of wrestling because I felt like such an outsider from it and um yeah it helps out like probably like two weeks ago I went to Oregon to jump off a 92 foot waterfall I think you saw that oh my that god video. dude I saw that holy shit but what happened was I got up there and there there was like no cell phone reception at all down there. And I got, I got up and I was like, yo, this is really high. I was like, this is high. And if I like land it wrong, I was like, no one would be able to come save me. And to get back up to where the cars were parked, you had to scale up the side of a mountain holding onto a rope. And So if you got so, up, you would have been left for dead. Yeah, like someone would have, we probably would have, I don't know, Someone would have had to walk with their cell phone reception and call it an airlift to come find me in there. Shit. But I was up there and I'm like, look, I'm like, I can't do this. Like, it's just, I got to wrestle Jay Lethal this week. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm look, I'm like looking, I'm looking and I, I'm up there for five minutes, but it's kind of wet, you know, and I slipped and I fell off the side. So if you watch the video back, um, you can see me like slip and then I fall to my ass and I'm already like leaning forward from falling, like slipping and I have to like, it's either I have to jump off and try to save myself or I'm going to try to like catch myself and then probably get more messed up. So I'm already leaning forward. So I jump off and I, I barely skate that one away. I was like, so it's kind of funny to think like, oh, I fell off a 92 foot waterfall. Holy but shit. That just happened. made my stomach turn. I used to not be afraid of heights in like the last like, maybe like five years or so, the idea of something like that happening or like falling. We just watched the new movie called, which obviously you've not seen it. Um, oh, f what is it called? It's the same people that did 47 meters down, but it's about these girls that climb this gigantic cell phone tower thing and that, they get stuck one, up there. I, I watched that on the plane. Okay. The other day with no like audio. I just like was watching the visuals of it and like the buzzards were like eating the dead girl. <laughs> And My palms I, were sweating the whole time. I was so f stressed out that whole movie. Yeah, that's that your was, real that, life. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was actually like I didn't get to watch it with audio, but it seemed cool. You know, it was, it, it's actually pretty good. It's one of those like as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my god, we have to watch this. Like forty-seven meters down, we went and saw it in theaters, and I remember like John and I were both like maybe having like minor panic attacks watching that film. Uh, and yeah, seeing I can't remember what this new one's called, but anyways, same people, same deal. Anyone's listening, hopefully knows what the hell we're talking about. But good movie, definitely check it out. Um, in the ring, where do you draw the line? on what you're going to do or somebody I, I assume somebody else is drawing this line for you uh i don't know actually <laughs> and so the like, body so bags like, stress me out those look gnarly when you're taking like a suplex in the body bags like how do you how uh, that's funny because uh this or right, like two weeks ago we were at my friend's uh he was performing at a music festival down in california uh, sacramento called uh aftershock it's like they had a bunch of people there that night. There was like Rob Zombie, Slipknot, but my buddy's band is a Ghost Mane, and they had like a pretty like good like 
turn for the crowd and we threw me in the body bag and threw me off the stage and I crowd surfed in the body bag and like it was like 90 degrees it was so f- hot and we, we went from the front of the crowd pretty much to the back like we went we got far and then because I got on the stage beforehand I was like yo everybody sometime at in this concert I'm gonna be getting in that body bag so uh just take me all the way to the back like because like, I want to like go through thousands of people zipped up and then as I was getting like crowd surfed through people they were like I guess the people that didn't know that I you know gave a speech they're like holy shit there's someone in there and it was like pretty it was pretty funny though uh but like that was that that was so hot I was like holy crap but um I'm gonna need to take a Xanax in order to complete this interview like that shit stresses me out oh my like how claustrophobic do you ever hit a point that you're like hey I'm done are we at the end? Like, let me out of this bag. Like, does that happen? No, I haven't. I haven't. No, not yet. But like, and I haven't got to a point either in the ring where I'm like, all right, this is, this is where I'm too sketched out. I don't know. Like there was the one part where I wrestled Jeff Hardy and I was on top of the ladder. And like, you know, when I did the front flip and we mm-hmm. went through the chairs. Yeah. So like, Earlier in the day, I climbed that ladder and I looked down. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm for sure going to the hospital tonight. Like, there's no, like, there's no way around it. Like, for sure." And then, uh, but like when the lights are on and the camera's going and you're up there, and then I'm like, "All right, here I go." And I did the flip, and then everyone asked me, "Like, Yo, how'd that feel?" I'm like, dude, honestly, it didn't feel like anything. It was so safe. Um, you can see me if you watch the video back. I like kind of go to Jeff's ear. I'm like, "That shit was so fun." <laughs> <laughs> And it was just like, uh, it was, uh, no, it, it, that was, that was fun. But that was like, I feel like AEW wise, that was like the craziest thing like that. I thought for sure I was like <laughs> going to meet my like doom meet your fate. Um, yeah. what was it like for you to work with Jeff Hardy? I mean, you guys have been compared for forever. So for you guys to finally get to meet working for the same company, get in the ring together. Um, what, what was it like? It was. It actually felt like I was putting a match together with myself. That's cool. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna front flip off of this, and he's like, "Well, then I'm gonna flip, and you're gonna move, and I'm gonna land on the stairs." I'm like, "I've never heard someone say that." <laughs> so I was, <laughs> it felt like I was talking to myself. It was a. Uh, it was cool. Like, uh, yeah, no, it it, it was fun because, dude, a week before, uh, it was supposed to be a normal match, just like a mm-hmm. straight up, just like match. And I went up to Tony, and I was like. Ain't nobody want to see us exchange wrist locks, but no. like we're gonna have first ever match with rule, like you know, like we no, like I, you know, you you getting put into a corner too much there, like something, yeah, something has to break, like there has to be something insane going on, and then it was like in New York where there was like a state commission, and I was like, oh. Why are we? Why can't we wait a week where we're in Texas where no one gives a shit? <laughs> it's like, a free for all in Texas. Let's go. Yeah. It was a week later we were in Texas. Like, why, why are we having this match in the commission state? Like, what are they going to yeah. let us do? I'm talking to the commissioner. Oh, I'm going to climb up this ladder. I'm going to jump through here. And he's like, okay, you got it. And I was like, oh, shit. It's on. <laughs> so he was cool with it. You know, there's just no blood. And I'm like, you know. And I was like, cool. So that Wait, was, is that uh, how that... it works when the commissioner's there? Like, they come out and you've got to, like, kind of go over to let them know what you're doing? How does that People work? Tell me, so I find the commissioner and I do that. Oh. <gasps> Oh, yeah. I wasn't kind of curious oh, it's how that everyone works. Everyone does that. You know what I mean? Like I don't. The, everyone always says like the commissioner is going to shut the show down if you do something stupid. So like I'm always yeah. thinking like, am I going to front, front flip off this ladder and the lights go out? Like <laughs> it's just like shows <laughs> over, guys. <laughs> like, Thanks for but, coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I just rather be like you know I like I want people to know what they're getting themselves into, you know. So. uh it's cool. Like I've never like busted a thing out on a match where I didn't tell anyone. Like I'm always like telling everybody every single small detail. Yeah. Because yeah. So um. That's yeah. Nice. No, that was, that was super. Yeah, that was super fun though. Like Jeff, uh, he was he was the man that like that night. It was it was cool as shit. It was yeah, fun. Jeff rolls. Jeff's the best. Um, what's like your family situation as a mom? When I'm seeing the things you're doing, I'm like, oh, my God, my daughter, if she were to be doing things like seeing her getting hurt, all of these things like that would freak me out. Does your family ever like call you up and they're like, can you just calm down? No, they're there for all of it. My mom and dad were there when I jumped my house. Oh my it was God. a 
<laughs> it was so funny because we jumped the house for the pilot of my reality show called mm -hmm. Darby's Days Off. So we, you know, we had this like reality thing where we were just like, what does Darby do in his days off? And it's just like this gnarly shit. And then my, my parents were in the whole pilot, you know, like it was following them around. It was super fun. Like it was like, I don't know. I, but uh, they were there. <laughs> And then my dad and my mom, like, have been there since, like, the beginning with all the gnarly shit that I was doing, like, in high school and, like, jumping off, like, with skateboarding and stuff like that. So they're used to it. But there's, like, I don't know. Like, they're so hyped on it now <laughs> that it, like, paid off. And it's not just. <laughs> it's not just some dumb I, hobby. I was, like, yeah, I was, like, I was a dishwasher. I worked at my first ever job was, like, Little Caesars. And I would dance in the outfit in the street. <laughs> and I was. I was like, man, I like, I was like, shit, like, I don't know. Uh, there was a lot, like, there was a lot of things they just didn't know if anything was gonna pan out. Like, is this guy gonna be jumping off his shit, working at Ross his whole life? Like, totally, <laughs> like, honestly, where does yeah. like that, where does like that thrillist part of you come from? Are your parents like that at all, or like what kind of just what sprung this whole crazy side of you? You know, what's funny is I actually make them do shit now. Like my dad, fantastic. Uh, I, I keep telling them like you're, you know, your uh, glory days are not going to be in your twenties. It's going to be in your sixties, mother. Now, and then, like, let's go. I get, I get like I ran it out this helicopter and I didn't tell them, and we, like it landed in my front yard, and we're like, all right, I'm taking you to this water spot. We're gonna fly from my house to this lake, and then you're jumping off the out of the helicopter into the lake. And my mom did it, and it was like sixty feet. It was crazy. Oh my but, uh, gosh. My mom's yeah. bones would all break. My mom's like 69. She'd be, my mom would be shattered. I don't know if she'd survive it. It, uh, it was cool. Like, and my, uh, my dad, like, ma make him do all this crazy shit. Like, uh, Brody King at, on the pilot of the show, like, body slammed my dad into thumbtacks Fantastic. in my wrestling ring. That's so It was great. cool. Yeah. So, like, I get them, you know, they don't know what to expect anymore. But that's what's the sickest part about this whole journey with AEW is bringing all my friends and family along for the ride, like, with everything I do outside. We do so much, like, crazy shit with my family now. It's so fun. But... <laughs> I love, but you know what? Those are some of my favorite things. Like when I used to watch Bam's show and he would have his mom and his dad involved and stuff like those were some of like the best parts of the show. I lived for that shit. It was great. Yeah. Like I actually um, hung out with Bam like two weeks ago. He came over to my house in Atlanta and uh, yeah, he was just like looking at everything. He's like, dude, this is perfect. And I was just like, yeah, like he's like looking at the skate park and stuff and that, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> has, what kind of like advice has he been able to give you? I mean, you guys have obviously done such similar things, but to now see where you're at in your wrestling career to like having the reality show kicking up, which we'll circle back to in just a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you're friends with Bam, you're friends with all these guys that have kind of lived and done that. What kind of um, advice do they give to you while you're working together? Dude, they they don't give me advice that like, I don't know, because like guys like Travis Pastrana and Tony Hawk, they're psychos, you know, like those yeah. are the guys like I, I hang out like with about and then they're going to just tell me keep going until I explode. So <laughs> there's no real <laughs> advice. Take them on. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I it's it's cool because now I can kind of do the same for others, like get everybody out of their own comfort zone. And it's a cool thing to see when you like have someone to do something that's like gnarly that they never thought they were going to do ever in their whole entire yeah. lives. And it's like, see what the human body is capable of. And that's yeah. what's like the cool, that's what the coolest thing about this whole like thing to me is just like physically seeing what, what's possible. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's super fun, but like those guys like Travis Pastrana and all those guys, like they helped me like big time with showing me like yo like anything's really possible because i never thought i was gonna backflip a tricycle over a 40 sure. foot gap that was insane <laughs> for how sure. cool is tony hawk to hang out with because he just seems like i think he's got to be like one of the most beloved athletes of all time dude he's awesome like it's literally it's crazy because tony hawk and travis pastrana are like the most like they're like the michael jordans of oh, their geez. sports yeah and then, like, they're, like, the sickest. And it's cool because they're, like, the most humble. It's, like, weird. It's, like, um, it's just, like, 
I don't know. The people that have accomplished everything that have nothing to prove mm -hmm. have no ego. And it's so cool when you hang out with like guys like that. I, it was insane. Like, I don't know. It, it's really cool. Um, they're just, I think the first time I ever talked to Tony Hawk, I was like, yo, like I want to, it was funny because I was going to go to his indoor skate park down in San Diego. And he's like, yeah, I'll meet you on Monday. But then he broke his finger. Oh, shit. And then, like, he told me, he's like, yo, uh, I, I can't make it. So, like, can you, uh, you can come skate my place still. And I was like, all right. I was kind of like, because I flew down from Atlanta. I was yeah. like, oh, I don't get that skate with Tony. But uh, as I was there, his assistant, like, let me in. And we're skating. And I'm, like, trying to skate off this big ladder. And then his assistant, like, taking this, like, picture. So I was like, yo, Tony, I don't know who the hell you you invite it, but this guy's jumping off of something big. <laughs> Tony, Tony's like, you know what? I gotta go down there and check it out. So he, he got, he left physical therapy and then came down and watched me skate this ladder. And it was sick because I landed the trick right when he got there. Oh my he gave God. Me, he gave me like superpowers. I ate shit for three hours straight trying this. The moment he walked through the door, I'm like, Oh shit, Tony's here. And I landed it. And I was like, it was insane, but uh, I was, was just going to ask you about that because at the beginning of uh, Tony's documentary, the, the newer one just came out, which is awesome. If anyone listening has not seen it, it's so, so great. But it starts with him trying to he's working on a trick. He's working on it, working on it, getting so frustrated. He hits his head, like goes through the motions with trying to like nail something down. But obviously you've been in a situation like that where you work on something for hours and hours and wait to, to land it or figure it out. What is that process like? It's insane. It's so weird because, like, back in the day, I was able to just, like, go crazy. And if I broke my ankle, I'm like, cool, whatever. I could just chill. But now I'm, like, on AEW. And people don't know how gnarly it is to balance out skateboarding and wrestling. Like, mm -hmm. it's, like, crazy. But I have such passion for skateboarding that you couldn't pay me to stop skateboarding. There's no way I would ever stop skateboarding. Like there's not enough money in the world to make me. And I mean that because there was a point in my first year in wrestling where I just stopped skateboarding. Cause I thought like I had to dedicate a hundred percent of my time to wrestling. Mm -hmm. So like I stopped like doing a lot of things and I was just wrestling. And then for some reason I was so depressed. I was like, man, like it's almost I was like, I'm forgetting who I am as a person. Like I mm -hmm. wasn't doing stunts. I wasn't skate. I was like, man, like something's missing. And the moment I picked back up the skateboard, I'm like, it was this. I'm never putting you down again. <laughs> I and love I, you, skateboard. That's pretty much it. And it was it was funny because like, so uh, it's like, there's nothing that beats skateboarding to this day. I don't know. It was it's like a feeling where with wrestling, I I love it, but I. It's so weird to say, but like I don't feel like it's my true uh, calling in life. What do you think is skateboarding? Skateboarding and backflipping tricycles. <laughs> <laughs> it was Both weird. going very well. That's yeah, the funny. Night, the night I backflipped the tricycle at this the Nitro Circus show in uh, New York, I'm like sitting there and I'm like so happy. I'm like I just feel like an outer body experience. I'm like I don't think I've ever experienced this in wrestling. It was, it's so weird. I don't know. It's like, I f like, so do I you feel wrestling. like there's like, yeah. Do you feel like there's, um, you're kind of like count, not counting down the days, but that at a certain point you would transition out of wrestling and just stick with doing the stunt, sticking to skateboarding when that time seemed appropriate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I just want to like go into like film and do other stuff. Yeah. I don't know, man. Unless like I'm like really having a good time with what I'm doing in wrestling, I'll obviously stay. But I always tell people I don't want to be one of these guys who's like fifty something wrestling in a high school gym, sure, because he has to, not because he wants to, right? Uh, so like I'm very like, I don't know. Sometimes I just get bored of the world. I don't know. <laughs> it's such like, an odd, I, like, like, it's such an odd career, like uh, all of it from like the pro wrestling, the stunts, the skateboarding to be like strategic about what your career and what your life looks like doing those things so that you can continue to make money and continue to build your career and build your name and all of those things, given the fact that they're all such like insanely natured, but you do have to be strategic about everything that you do. Yeah, that's why I want to start like investing in real estate and all this other crap yeah like yeah you know, like that's like 
I'm very like smart with my money. Like I'm not no idiot. I'm not gonna buy like a boat that I don't need. You know, like I don't like I don't need a nice car. It's just like there's a but I don't know. I just I wanna like know that if I wanna disappear from the world I can. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to I don't know. I just think it'd be so cool to just disappear from everything for like two years and go to some random country and like just fall off the face of the earth and you know never update people with where i'm at like it just sounds like nice did you get like a little did you scratch that itch a little bit because you were like this was off wikipedia so i don't know if it's true or not but um that you were like chose to be homeless for a period of time yeah that's when i like moved from seattle to atlanta yeah i was like because Seattle was like the black hole of wrestling. There was like no shows at the time. This was before Defy yeah. and everything. Like it was, you couldn't wrestle in the state. The commission wouldn't let you have pro wrestling shows in the state of Washington. So we'd always have to go to like Vancouver, Canada or, or Oregon or something like yeah. that. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta get out of here. And then I, and then I was like, I don't know. There was something was like living in my car where. I just didn't have a comfort zone because, like, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I really want this to work out, but they don't put, like, everything into it. Sure. And then uh, I'm, I don't want – I want to look at myself in the mirror and be like, yo, you put – you dedicated everything in this, so you have no fucking excuse if you don't make it. Yeah. So that's where, you know, when you don't have the comfortability to sit down on the couch and, you know, be, like, lazy and watch it episodes of whatever uh yeah when you're living in your car because it especially in georgia it was so hot in the summer the oh my god was, oh yeah what did you do <laughs> i i would have to have like a strict bedtime so i got decent sleep before and then i would just like i parked in this uh air uh this hotel parking garage it was connected to an anytime fitness and i got the anytime fitness membership and then i was just like cooking all my food there at the George Foreman grill in the bathroom at like one in the morning. Oh my and then gosh. It, it was fun. like everybody was always like, there, there was always like one random guy that was like in there. He's like, why the hell does it smell like salmon in this <laughs> gym? And then I'd walk out like, just like, like I didn't know what he's talking about, but it was fun. I don't know. It was just like, like, so you thoroughly enjoyed that time of your life or was there any part of you that was like a little like sad to be living like that? Or you were just like in it? No. I enjoyed it. I just didn't want to get like robbed or shot. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, there'd be some, there'd be sometimes I'm like driving around Atlanta and I didn't I didn't know the lay of the land. Like, and I'd be like, okay, like, I'll sleep in this Waffle House parking lot, and then I'll wake up and there's like these sketchy people around my car. I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna get stabbed in the Waffle House. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so like then I found the hotel like parking garage, and I was like, and I parked at the very top. I was like, ain't no one going to walk all the way up here and rob somebody. So yeah, I felt like- apparently hills are good for that. People don't want to walk. We live at like the top of a hill. And yeah, apparently that's good for like no crime because nobody wants to walk up a hill to commit a crime. Who's got the time for yeah. that? It was, yeah, it was always, it was fun though. <laughs> uh, sometimes I like, even like last week I drove to that parking garage to work out at the Anytime Fitness and I sat, I parked up there and I just thought about like how different life is now compared yeah. to then. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, who? It's, it's like, I don't know. It is really cool when you can like really have those moments. It's funny, when I was just home in Toronto last week, I was feeling the same way. I don't get home nearly as much as I thought that I would, but anytime I'm there, it does remind me of the like going for auditions and changing in my car and like all the like, waitressing a million different jobs, like all of those things. It's always fun to kind of remind yourself of the, the dues that you've paid, whether you set them yourself it, or not. It's weird. It's like a double-edged sword. Like when I go back to Seattle, it like I love it, but then it scares me because it feels like how easily like you could have failed and have been there still at Little Caesars. Like every time I drive by that Little Caesars, I'm like, F- dude, I'm scared. <laughs> like, I'm just like, don't, I don't pull know. me back in. Yeah, yeah that's no, why it I is scary. Got all these crazy, crazy tattoos like on my face or on my neck. Like you can't really see this one on my face here because there's always paint on it. But uh, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna get all these tattoos, so I have to commit to like never getting a normal job again because like I was like I don't you know I don't know there's 
So how about that new spine tattoo? Because I feel like I saw you post about getting the new tattoo and then you were wrestling mere seconds later. Was that horrible to wrestle on that? Like two seconds after you just got it done? Yeah, because Brody King gave me a back chop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was probably that a white. Yeah. Up, but besides that, no, like, yeah, it was, it was fun. Like I, uh, the worst by far was the fingertips, like right here, like that, though, that oh, hurt yeah. so bad. I was in the chair for like six hours and there on my hand, I was like about to vomit. I was like, this, f-ing. but you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It, it was worth it. You know? but Beauty is pain. To- so they say. Yeah, like the the AEW toy makers, they're all like, "God damn it! Every time you get a new tattoo, we gotta create a new." Toy. That's a smart move, though. That's what wrestlers know. That change your gear and get some more tattoos, and you get more action figures. <laughs> Go into business yeah, for that- yourself. Um, you were talking at the beginning about when you got into wrestling, sort of feeling like an outcast and didn't really know where you belonged or how you were gonna make it in this world. How how did you navigate the world of wrestling when you first started getting involved? So, like, when I graduated high school, I was 18, and then uh, I, like, looked up this, like, wrestling school that was in my area called the Buddy Wayne Academy, and then I, uh, I like, looked on their website, and it was a bunch of, like, big jacked dudes, like, wearing, like, sweatpants and sweatshirts, and then at this time, I had literally, like, a two-foot mohawk. It was, like, <laughs> huge, and then I was like, yeah, I can't fucking, no, that ain't gonna work, so I went to film school, and then I was at this... Um, there was like this like shitty ass indie in like Arizona because I went to film school in Arizona. There's like this shitty independent show. And then like I went there and I was watching it and I was like, all right, if these guys are, if you were paying to watch this, I should at least try this, you know, because I've always wanted to do wrestling. It was just like my mind was back. And then, so I was like, this, I'm going to try it. And I was like, I dropped out as, film school and then went back to Washington and went back to the Buddy Wayne Academy. And then, uh, I walked in there and then, uh, I was like taking bumps all day for the first time. And then Buddy was like, yo, how's that feel? Like expecting me to be like, Oh my God, it hurts so bad. But I was like, this ain't shit. Like, cause like I was like falling, <laughs> I was falling on concrete forever. And he's like, who is this kid? Like, what was his deal? Like, and I showed him You're all these nuts. videos. I showed him all these videos of all the stunts that I was doing. He's like, all right, I think we're onto something here. And it was just like, it was like a matter of trying to have that world, like the stunt world and the skateboard world, like meet the wrestling world. Cause it's never been done before. Uh, like you could say like Jeff Hardy, obviously, or Mick Foley is a stunt man. Yeah. Like sure. that's like for sure. But like, I was just like, how do I, how do I connect these worlds? They're so like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like the crossovers there. And that's like my, big goal with wrestling is to find fans that either gave up on wrestling or never gave it a chance because if they're like oh there's actual skateboarder that like or stuntman or something like that that actually like wrestles like it's cool like you know uh and i feel like the crossover is definitely there because i've a lot of like like fans like wrestling can connect to like a lot of like you know skateboarders and stuff like that but they just never gave it a chance so uh it's cool to um kind of be like the first of that kind but uh i definitely i was lucky enough to find my niche in wrestling like real quick Mm -hmm. because by the time i got to AEW, i was only wrestling for like six years wow and uh so like i didn't you know what i mean it's cool to not uh, i don't know like be on the independence for 20 years like it's yeah i just never felt like i was long for that world like i i felt like i needed to make it a tv wrestling as fast as possible Mm mm-hmm um, yeah. Because I connect with like a big audience. Who do you like to work with the most? I mean, somebody like you who, you know, you can bump your ass off for anybody. I'm sure there's a lot of like big men that love to work with you or being able to step in with Jeff Hardy, working alongside Sting the way that you do. Like, who do you kind of pull um, inspiration from and stuff that you like to work with? Oh, crap. Uh, I like to work with. Um, let me think like there's a lot of people but I, I i don't know like i really like to work with guys like brody king and uh like obviously jeff but then i don't know i like to work with like everybody like I'm, <laughs> it's so weird but uh I, I i'm not sure who um 
I just remember like the very beginning of AEW wrestling like Cody was real fun mm -hmm. and then wrestling John was real fun wrestling uh God, I remember Jericho. you and John wrestling before was it Northeast wrestling that you guys wrestled for the first time is that right yeah yeah that was his first like US indie yeah that's right or that he had like a match or something yeah. in New Japan but um yeah like I know that match meant a lot because I feel like Tony Khan didn't really know much about me because mm -hmm. like obviously Cody is the one who like found me and it was like I felt like that match everybody was gonna be watching that you know be like oh yeah. what's the deal with like Darby or like oh John's wrestling in the US indie like the f is gonna happen yeah so I, <laughs> I had like a game plan that night like I went up to him I was like yo put me in this body bag and throw yeah. me out of the ring <laughs> yes I remember that yeah and he's like he's like he's like no <laughs> like I'm not doing that and I was just like, I was like, uh, it, I, I definitely, I heard from somewhere that Tony Khan watched that match and he's like, okay, I understand everything about Darby now. Like, it all makes sense. Like, there's something to this. So, like, you know, like, so, like, I used that. Like, that was a big one. And that was before I even debuted in AEW. Like, yeah. that was before Cody. So, like, that was a, that was a big, like, kind of first impression on everybody you know, because obviously everyone's going to watch and see what John's going to be doing. So. Sure, sure. Um, how did things come about for you and Sting to work together? Because it's obviously such a great pairing. But, like, what was, like, sort of the origin story of you guys getting together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just made sense. We both got paint. So, well, that's that's the funny is people, like, say, like, oh, yo, so you guys are together because you just paint your face. And then – it's crazy what people don't see behind the scenes, like how much we get along. Yeah. Because I've said this, like during the pandemic, when we were at Daily's Place for like a year or more, I don't even remember. But uh, I would change in the boiler room. Like that was like my spot. I just like we'd shut the door and just be in the boiler room. And then one day like Sting walked by and he's like, why, the, why are you in this boiler room? And I was like, I just like to be in my own zone. I don't know, like my own world, like get away from everything. I, uh, and then he's just like, all right, well, my locker room's your locker room for now on. And then uh, ever since then, even when we went on the road, like he's just like, your locker room's my locker room. So I, I just, That's I'm in cool. Sting's room. It's like we have such, you know, stuff outside of the ring. Like it's cool, but no one gets to see that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so like when, when we're paired off now, it feels super right. But in the beginning, I have no idea. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's funny because they're like, all right, you're going to sit in the rafters uh, for like a couple of weeks. And I didn't put two and two together. And then they said, oh, yeah, Sting's going to debut. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, and I've never met him. And then, like, I started talking to him. And then he was watching all my promos. And he's like, dude, don't change a thing. Like, you're, you're doing awesome. And then they asked me uh, to be paired with him. And then, it was awesome to be like, to have like, um, to play a part in his like final chapter. Yeah. Unless. What a unless chapter it's been like, holy shit. It like, what, what do you think about the stuff that Sting is able to pull off? Like at this point in his career, people are constantly like shocked at what he's doing. Yeah. I, I remember watching back in 2014 when he wrestled Seth at that one pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I remember watching that, like, from like my trainer's house and I was like, Oh dude, this <laughs> Sting's career is over. Like <laughs> this is like insane. And that was my first year in wrestling. I was watching right. that and I was like, oh dude, like this is this is like insane. Cause like you hear neck stuff, you think it's like crap. And at that rate I'm like, all right, what does Sting have to prove? Like he can just ride off in the sunset. Yeah. So when he when he came to AEW, that's when he was originally supposed to just do cinematic matches. Mm -hmm. But uh, I spent a, I spent an afternoon with him at his house. He had a wrestling ring, and we were just rolling around. I was like, "Dude, you're we don't fine." Need to be. I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I was like, dude, like, come on, let's do a real match." And I'm like, "You got, you got it, like, dude, come on." And then next thing I know, he's like, "Okay, you talked me into it." And then we had the match with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, and that was like, that was probably my favorite match in AEW, considering like everything about it. Like it was the first like 
full attendance show since the pandemic. Sting was wrestling for the first time since everyone thought he's like his neck was gone. You yeah. know, like so like that was a, that was a very special moment and like stuff like that. That's where like you know people are like yo, what does Darby and Sting have in common? And it's like there's so much that goes into it, yeah. and it's cool. Like I'm like the Sting whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> it is really uh, crazy, though. I mean, even just like through the duration of like this interview of like the Tony Hawks, the Stings, like these legendary people in their field are all like your peers. I feel like that's a big testament to to like who you are and what you bring to the table. I don't really expect you to have an answer to this, but like, what do you think that's about? Like, there's just something there that just seems like you guys all belong in the same room. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's weird because, you know, sometimes with wrestling, I feel like you have to go away for people to, you know, I think people take a lot of wrestlers for granted, you know, with like mm -hmm. the shit they do and in the ring and stuff like that. And, and then there's been times because like I've haven't been off of AEW since I've started. Like, yeah, I've had like, a two week break or a three week break or whatever, but I haven't been gone for more than like a month mm -hmm. since AEW started. And then there was a time, you know, like in the spring where I was like, I feel like I need to disappear for like, I don't know. It was just, it was just weird. Cause like, I remember a moment last year, it was that casino ladder match. It was the two people were on the ladder. It was John and it was Hangman. And Hangman just came back from having a kid. And the crowd was like in Philly was turning on John. It was like weird. They were like, yo, look, come on, Hangman. And I was like, like these fans like don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I felt it was I was like. I was like, I never thought the fans were going to, like, boo John ever. Like that, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then John went off, and then when John came back, and then John's been on this crazy run. I forgot how long John was gone for, but, like, he that he's been on this crazy run. Yeah. And, like, the fans, like, but, like, last year, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there was, like, There's you're... definitely, like, something to, like, being off TV for a while. There's value in that to be able to, like, f give your face a little rest off of TV, make people miss you, make people want you to be there and – they appreciate you so much more when you come back. Yeah, but that's what I thought when I jumped off the ladder. I was like, all right, man, I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to be gone for a while. <laughs> and I survived. <laughs> so uh, He survived it. It's weird, man, because like I, I don't know. I just feel like people take a lot for granted, and I don't know. I, I just feel like I got to disappear, and maybe – I'm hoping that I blow up in a Jeep one day. <laughs> so I don't. Not at this rate. Those things are built well. You got it back up on its feet. It's good to go. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just feels like, I don't, I don't know. It just, I, I feel like, I don't know. I just got to disappear and be gone. Like really off and be gone. <laughs> and like, cause I, I was like in the spring, I was just like, Hmm. I don't know. I just felt like I was floating around. Mm -hmm. It was it was weird because like you know, people will say stuff like, "All right, you're wrestling like CM Punk. Uh, you're Punk's first match back, or you you have all these pivotal moments." And like Darby kind of fell off. You know what I mean? Like Darby's not, you know, like I don't know. Darby's not being used right. Darby's not this. Darby's not that. And I was just like trying to maneuver around and stay relevant with without disappearing. Right is like like the ultimate challenge and like sure. I said, it is a challenge I've, I've been there since like the you know like the beginning of tv and stuff like that and i've never had that consistent time off and i was just like how the f like you know and it's just like i don't know uh sometimes you just gotta remind her mother mother, mother f who you are and jump <laughs> off like something here and like you know but like oh yeah you know yeah but uh yeah I'm, like i'm extremely happy like in the ring and in outside the ring but like i don't know i just think everything happens for a reason like you know so i i don't know what's gonna <laughs> you know i don't know what's gonna happen so i'm gonna go to outer space and then i'm personally not gonna come back <laughs> okay so i'll ask you this is the last question then you do go to outer space who are you gonna wrestle in space 
Dude, anyone who wants to step up, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who wants to go to space with me, but, like, I would. it'd be cool to go to space and... I'm just, I don't know, man. Who wants to go to space? I don't know. A lot of people I don't want to go to space, but um, I will happily conduct an interview from the shuttle or whatever on ground level. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea who I would want to uh, wrestle in space. Like, <laughs> I don't know. A hardcore match in space. Loser has to, I don't know. Loser I don't know gets, the, yeah, loser gets sucked into the stars. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just... I don't know. I have all these pugs at home. I feel like my pugs would miss me if I never came back. From You're space. a pug guy? Yeah, I had 12 pugs at my house. Excuse the f me? You have 12 pugs? Yeah. That's yeah, a lot it, of farting and snorting. Yeah, but uh, I, I had to lower the herd and give oh. some to my family and friends because you can't give them one on one time. You know no, what I mean? It's too many. So, like, yeah, me and uh, back when I was married to Priscilla Kelly, mm -hmm. we. She's like, yo, like I want to get this pug, and I was like, cool, let's get it. And then, and then from there, she's like, the pug needs a friend, and I was like, cool, like let's get, let's get a friend. And then that was a man and a female, and then they had kids, and I thought it was gonna be like four kids, but then eight babies popped out. Oh my out, gosh! I, I was like, holy shit! Like, what the f am I doing here? Like, and uh, it was funny because I keep like, so like, me and her, like, it feels like. It feels like we got divorced and we have kids, but it's like the pug babies. <laughs> I'm like, hey, do you want to? Do you want to visit? Like, do you want visitation rights this week? Oh with my the pugs? gosh! You guys are still on like friendly terms, then obviously. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, nice. Absolutely. That's cool. But it's like it feels like the one thing. It feels like we have this like kid with these like yeah. pugs. I'm like, hey, take care of these pugs this week. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. It's yeah, no, it's it's funny though. So. That's great. But, uh, oh, my yeah. gosh. I had no idea. I also did not know pugs had that many puppies in one litter. Jeez, I would have thought like four, two, eight. I, I didn't Lord. know. Either. I didn't know either. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> started giving like birth in the walk-in closet. And I was like, what is going on here, man? Like, I was just like, I'm Because like, uh, I, it's, it's uh, it, yeah, but it was cool. And they must have been so cute. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Well, listen, Darby, I appreciate you hopping on here and uh, delving into many different topics with me. Um, should you ever decide to, to just f off for a bit and go do your own thing? Uh, well, I'll be very excited to see you come back. But in the meantime, uh, it's just it's really fun watching you cement your legacy as you go. I mean, you definitely are doing that currently um, in AEW. And I do think fans thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate you. But I like that you put so much thought and effort into all of your work. Very cool. Yeah. I want to stop and smell the roses, but you can't. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Do you ever have that? Where you, I do, you actually, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Like, literally, before back. before I signed with AEW, I was literally going, should I just, like, forget it? Should I, should I just, like, hang with my kid and be at home? And, like, what a luxury to be able to do that, first of all. But, like, yeah, I definitely was, like, should I just, like, pause and slow down? And now I feel like I have more jobs than I can handle um which yeah exactly like you can't stop and smell the roses i don't know what's going on or what's happening ever um it's it's definitely it was like that for me when i was at wwe too because even when i decided that i was gonna leave was when covid kicked in and i was like oh my god things have finally slowed down enough that i can actually jump off this ride it's slowed down enough that i can like do a little open the door and do a duck and roll out um, cause yeah, it's, it's hard to find time to like get the world to slow down so you can actually just enjoy the things that you're doing. It's, it's rough yeah, out there. I, th I think that's why I don't have Wi-Fi or TV. I feel like it's like my only downtime. From, like, yeah. The the world. No, it's smart. It is really smart just to like reconnect with yourself and to be writing and thinking about different things. Cause God, there's so many times I'll just be like zoning out and I'm like, why am I back on this app? Why am I looking at this stuff? I don't even care about it. Like, put it away. So you're definitely smarter than the rest of us by just don't participate. Unplug. Unplug yeah. and flip some trikes. Well, thanks for having me on.